At that moment, I knew I was never coming back. Hey guys, it's Shalay Day and welcome back to another YouTube video. So before I start this video, I am being sponsored by V-Look Glasses. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them, but they're a glasses company that sells glasses frames. So I'm going to show you guys about five pairs that they sent me. They're really, really super cute. I was able to pick them, so y'all are going to see my taste. They were able to actually take my contact prescription from my contacts into the actual glasses frame. Normally, a lot of glasses companies, they will take your prescription from your other glasses and put them into other glasses frames. But however, I don't really have any glasses from my provider. So I've only always had contacts. So they literally took my contacts contact prescription and put them directly into all five of these glasses so if you guys don't have any glasses and you're scared like you know you want your prescription in it and you only got your contacts you're able to do that and I thought that was really really cool also the glasses frames are very affordable I know that you guys go to your glasses providers and you see the glasses frames and they're ranging from 50 to 70 dollars these are extremely affordable I think the max is about 10 dollars or 15 so definitely go and check that out all the links will be in the description below for all of the glasses so don't forget to shop the look glasses and get you a pair of glasses y'all period So in this video today, it is going to be a story time video and honestly, let me start off by saying this. I know you guys seen that I recently got a job and that I was so excited to start and y'all know that I was going to have to quit my previous job from working at the airport to pursue this new job. So that's literally where we stopped off at and then I recently uploaded a vlog of me getting ready for my first day of work and then by the ending of the vlog, when I came back a couple days later I stated in the ending of the vlog that there was gonna be a story time coming because I am no longer working with that company so it's a lot of things that transpired within that few short moments y'all so I just want to dive into it and let y'all know what really happened so before we start off to give you guys a backstory of why I'm even switching jobs and doing that um, it's because I am going through a little something that's personal and I don't really want to talk about that and it requires me to basically get a different job so I was like okay well now I need to be job hunting job hunting job hunting so I was job hunting and I finally found the perfect fit for me and it is a marketing company in Atlanta so I'm like okay period like I'm gonna be in marketing which I thought that that was going to be a best fit for me because as a youtuber you market yourself a lot you get what I'm saying I'm marketing myself right now this is what I do like this is this is who I am and I really enjoy it so I'm like okay marketing might not be that bad so I end up applying for the job and then by Friday Saturday is when they told me that I got the job so I literally was here at Saria's and they told me yeah you got the job da, 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 da. but basically let me dive into the interview because I want to tell you guys what was told to me during the interviews for me to even accept the job offer so number one they told me that it is an 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. job so that means the start time of my job would be 8 a.m. and the end time would be 4 p.m. They also said that we were going to be in the field working. So in the field, um, I was not told what in the field was until later. So I was like, okay, what times are we going to be in the field? They told me two to three hours out of my whole work day. So if I am working from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., only two to three hours, I would be in the field. So I'm like, okay, cool. That doesn't sound too bad. They told me that I would be getting paid every week. So I'm not going to tell you guys the max, but I'm I'm definitely gonna tell you guys the minimum so they told me that the minimum that I was going to get paid every single week was going to be $600 flat okay so I'm like okay that's not too bad because you know I also heard the max and the max was definitely max name <laughs> okay then they moved into saying what our job consisted of they told me that we were going to be marketing government issued phones to lower income people so that means anybody that makes under a hundred thousand dollars a year would get a government issued phone for free 
anybody who gets food stamps, anybody who gets Medicaid, anybody gets disability, any government assistance would get a government issued phone for free. I'm like, okay, this job doesn't seem too bad. When I got the job, they told me that they want me to wear business casual wear because it's a business casual setting. It's a business casual environment. I was excited to wear business casual clothes. Like I was just so excited. They also told me the day of them, you know, recruiting me and telling me that I got the job. They told me that, hey, we know that you said that, you know, you work somewhere right now currently, but are you able to give them a one week notice versus a two weeks notice because we need you to work ASAP. So I'm like, okay, you know, um, I'm a little hesitant. I was planning to give my old job a two weeks notice just out of decency to leave on good standings. Even though I did not really want that job no more, I just did not want to leave them on bad standings. So I was like a little hesitant, but they were like, yeah, can you know you speak to someone and do it one week? So I'm like, you know what, Shalaya, I don't even want to be at my old job anymore, honestly. Like, I really don't want to be there anyway. So I might as well just do the one week and then go to this, you know, new company so I ended up going to my job telling them that I want a one week notice and that I got a new job and that you know I have to pursue it and so and so and they were like okay that's fine but if you give a one week you're not able to use any of your saved up vacation time and you cannot ever come back to the job period so I'm just like okay well realistically I don't want to go back to that job anyways they're paying literally probably like the same amount that I can get anywhere at this point so it doesn't make sense that I go back to that job anyway so I was willing to take that risk so I ended up taking a risk y'all I honestly don't regret it because it's a learning lesson but it's like damn so anyways basically um the first day of the job I got ready that's when I filmed the get ready with me for the first day of work vlog okay so that's when I first filmed that I got ready and I went to work I stepped into the building y'all when I stepped into the building, when I stepped into the building, they had loud music playing like boom, 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 loud ass music like bitch, it was fucking, it was some hood trap music bitch, it was I Still Your Man on the radio, it was fucking, it was just a whole ass, it's literally, it was just too much going on bitch they had baby on the mic they had fucking jt they had city they had fucking mulatto they had all the girls like they really did they had all the girls on the mic so i get in there bitch the floor is shaking i'm shaking the desk is shaking bitch i can't hear them i can't hear nobody nobody can't hear me they're talking about who are you here for and i'm like oh i'm here for so and so you get what i'm saying so the lady comes out and she's like hey like you know da, da, da. energetic don't get me wrong they had good vibes and everything but i just felt like business casual like that was a stretch like bitch i could have came up in here in jeans and a t-shirt you ain't have to tell me no business casual period but anyway so she basically you know was talking to me for a few minutes and we were talking and then we migrated upstairs we went upstairs and basically upstairs is a flat area and it has long whiteboards like four or five long whiteboards in the middle of the floor and it's about 90 people y'all 90 people standing up in front of the whiteboards all over the place and they're just like writing on the whiteboards and they're like okay today this is what we're gonna do and da, 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 da. and i'm just looking like what the mind you jt and little baby is on the mic in the back okay they ain't never turned their ass off okay they were still on it bitch they were bumping they were grinding bitch i could it, i could have said i was at the club i could have literally wore my club outfit and was shaking my ass turn off the lights my nigga shaking my ass bitch it was giving club it was never giving business casual after they're done writing and all of us is done writing and stuff and whatever mind you i'm trying to keep an open mind y'all because not only did i just quit my job <laughs> How bad could it actually get? After the whiteboards and everything, the person that I was with, she ended up giving a speech. So her speech was... <laughs> Mama girl was cursing throughout the whole entire speech. Like, and and it was like, it was like some, some weird stuff. Like, let me tell you, like two claps and a fuck yeah for the new assistant. And then everybody like, Fuck yeah, like it's like that. I'm looking like, what the fuck? This ain't no business casual. This ain't no business. This is a club. 
club. This is a club get together, bitch. Period. You couldn't convince me otherwise. Cause baby, this was giving club. It was never giving business casual. But anyways, so after that, I'm just looking like, yo, like they're making me feel comfortable, but it's kind of like uncomfortable at the same time. Like I'm not, when you think of business casual, you think to be, you know, like petite, careful. You don't want to say the wrong thing. Like baby, they were cussing full blown out. And JT and baby was still on the mic. Uh, they were still on the mic. Y'all, they didn't never take the Bluetooth off. They, them, they were still going. So after that, we go back downstairs and that's where we collected all the government issued phones and we put them in a bag and we basically, you know, was headed out. So now I'm thinking like, okay, this is where, you know, we stay in the field for two to three hours. So I'm like, okay, so I'm keeping an open mind. So we scoop up all the stuff and we put them in her car. We left it in her car, y'all, okay? So we're on the company site and we, all of us, mind you, all 90 people end up going into all day cars, like two in a car, three in a car maybe. And we all part ways in Atlanta. So now I'm like, okay, well now I need to know where the site at. You get what I'm saying? Like I need to know where the site at. The, the office wasn't too bad. So let me know where the site's at. Y'all, I kid you not, y'all. Tell me where the site was. Tell me where the site was. Bitch, the site was in the ghetto in front of a food depot and family dollar. <laughs> Bitch, we were in the hood, y'all. We were literally in the fucking ghetto, my nigga. Like, I cannot stress it enough. Y'all, bro, the ghetto, you come out of your car, you see glass on the fucking floor, my nigga. You, you pulling up to the, dry, to, to the parking spot, and bitch, you about to go into the earth's crevice, bitch, and back up to the fucking earth's crust. Okay, bitch, that's, it's giving ghetto, it was ghetto. That's where the homeless people be walking right beside you, bitch, in pajamas. Not even no regular home, pajamas, bitch. You know, you know it's in the ghetto when you walking past, the homeless people walking past you in pajamas. Yo, that shit was so ghetto. It was the hood. Like, literally, it was the hood. We were in the hood. So now I pull up, I'm like, okay, Shalay, I can thug it out for two to three hours, bro. We, I can thug it out for two to three hours. So we end up coming out the car and we set up. Bitch, we setting up a foldable table, bitch. A foldable table. They had the damn phones on that hole like this. Basically, our job is to go up to these people in the ghetto and be like, hey, I know you're super busy. Do you receive food stamps? Oh, you do? Do you want a free phone? Literally, that's what we're doing, bitch. I'm not no begging somebody to get a free phone ass hoe. Like, it didn't, it never gave that. So, bitch, I was looking like, I know you fucking lying. In my head, I'm literally thinking like, Shalea, I have to thug it. It's only two to three hours. Like, you gonna say, I can thug it. I can be the thug. Like, period. So, I'm thugging it, thugging it, thugging it. Lunch break come up. Bitch, guess what we was doing for lunch? How about... We went and got Wendy's, sat that bitch on the foldable table, that bitch. Men can breathe on that bitch and the shit turn the fuck over, bitch. And I'm just literally eating in front of a fucking Food Depot plus family dollar in the fucking ghetto. I'm looking like, child, this is not the lifestyle for me. Like, trust me, like, I like the marketing scene, but it, it wasn't giving marketing, honestly. It was giving something else. It just wasn't giving what it was supposed to give. So basically, after we ate and everything, we continued to sell the phone. So now it's going on like the third hour, going into the fourth, and I'm just looking like, <laughs> When are we packing up shop? So I look at her and I'm like, oh, what time do we leave? She said, sis said, six. Bitch, do y'all know what time we got out there? We got out there at 11. 11, 12, one, two, three, four, five, six. Bitch, that's the whole damn shift. Imagine, imagine I'm out this motherfucker for the whole shift, my nigga. We're outside the whole shift in the ghetto, sweating, in a fucking blazer. Bitch, are you ridiculous? Now, I'm being told our field time is now not two to three hours, it's fucking eight hours. So that's number one. The way that we were selling, having to sell these, I just, it just didn't, it wasn't clicking to me. So then we end up going home that day and I went home and I freaking cried. So that first day when I filmed the getting ready for my first day of work, I could not get back on camera. I was literally crying my eyes out. Like y'all, 
I was crying my soul and eyes out. Like, I was worried. I'm like, yo, what the heck am I going to do? Like, the whole point of me getting this job was for it to better me in some aspect for the situation I'm going through. So, so I'm worried. I'm crying, 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 crying. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Like, I'm literally bawling my eyes out. I end up praying that night. After I cried, like, I end up showering and praying. And I read, like, this Bible plan on the Bible app. And it was like, um, how not to worry. And I read it. And I prayed and literally left it in God's hands. And ever since that, today is now September 10th. And I probably got the job. I started the job probably on the 24th or something of August. And I genuinely have been good. Like, I prayed about it, left it in God's hands. And I don't worry I don't cry about it I'm literally perfectly fine but after that first day basically I cried prayed and just left that and then I went back the next day because I'm like Shalea I have to thug it out until I actually find another job at least so I end up getting ready going to the job once I got there they were like okay so your shift start time is 9 to 6 so now I'm looking like huh you just said 8 to 4 and now my shift time is nine to six. So now I'm looking like, okay, this ain't this ain't adding up. So now you mean to tell me y'all lied about how long we're gonna be in the field. So realistically, I'm about to be outside for eight hours. That's the whole shift. Then secondly, y'all lied about the shift start time now. Now it's nine to six. So now I'm already skeptical. And from that, I was just like, okay, I might not come back the next day. So I end up proceeding. We do the same little thing in the morning, you know, the whiteboards and all that good stuff, whatever, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Then we move into the going out into the field. So now I was partnered up with somebody else. And that means that I was not going to be driving in that girl car from yesterday. So that means the person who partnered up with me either has to have a car or if they don't have a car that's my car that's being driven so i'm like okay so i get parking up and now i have to drive my car we went out back to the same location and as we were setting up y'all mind you we back in the ghetto oh baby we back in the hood we back in the hood where the gunshots reside okay <laughs> we're back there baby we in the hood so we setting up back our foldable table i literally look over into the parking lot because mind you we're in front of the food depot and family dollar so in front of us is parking lot i look to my left in the parking lot i see this nigga roll up bitch in his fucking car the man comes out of the car this nigga have a big ass shotgun the nigga has a shotgun like he's about to blow us to smithereens bitch the nigga came out with the shotgun longer than my life my nigga the shit looked like it was a school shoot about to shoot up the fucking place bitch he came out that bitch like he knew what he was doing with the gun he came out the car like he knew who the target was bitch that was a mess i'm looking at this nigga like i know you fucking lying heart dropped from my fucking chest to my asshole from my asshole to the fucking earth's crust into the earth's crevice my nigga my fucking heart was gone i was in fear for my life at this point i'm ready to turn around get my big ass in my fucking truck and waddle my hoonty all the way back to fucking where i came from my nigga because this shit is ridiculous number one y'all sat here and lied about the time frame we gonna be in the field then y'all lied about the shift start time now y'all mean to tell me my life is in jeopardy of the fucking people in the hood are y'all crazy i am from the suburbs i don't know no type of lifestyle like this i am for i'm where the palm trees reside okay where pine cones be dropping and shit i don't know nothing about uh the food depot plus dollar general hookup i don't know this my person who i'm with is trying to calm me down you get what i'm saying he's getting me into check he's used to this <laughs> he's true to it <laughs> But yeah, so next thing you know, he starts to call dude over here. And I'm like, nigga, why would you call this man with a 99 millimeter fucking gun? Why would you, why would you call this nigga over here? He's about to shoot us to smith. We're about to lose our lives over government issued phones. Like, <laughs> why would you do that? The guy was surprisingly cool. He put his little, his contraption away. And he put that shit away real nice, real tight in the trunk. So throughout the rest of the evening, um, I was talking to the guy that I was with and just asking him more questions about the job because now I'm skeptical because y'all lied about the shift start time, y'all lied about the time that I'm going to be in the field, and my life seems to be in jeopardy. Like, nigga, tell me a little more about the job. But he was like, yeah, it's really cool, yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, okay, so what about the pay? He was like, oh, it's only based off a of commission. Bitch, a kahoot? Bitch, based on a ka what? 
B based on a what? <laughs> Cause the math ain't mathing. So you mean to tell me I'm outside for eight hours of the shift. Get my big ass up at like seven, eight o'clock. Driving 45 minutes away to Atlanta to fucking only be outside for the whole shift. Then to come back just to tell me that it's based off the commission. So then I started to ask him how, well, how the math go. So he's like, oh, each phone is around $15. So if we sell all these phones, whatever, whatever, it equals up to how much we make the week. So I'm like, so there's no flat fee. There's no base pay of 600 minimum. He's like, no, there's none. We're only based off a of commission. At that moment, I knew I was never coming back. So now that means y'all literally lied about every aspect of the job. Like literally, I mean like everything that came out of their mouth was a lie. So then we ended up packing up, ended up leaving, and we ended up going back to the job. And you know, I, I just, you know, played it cool. Like, yeah, you know, da 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 da. Never came back. Um, the other day they had texted me, probably like two days later or a day later, she texted me and was like, hey, like, you know, are you coming in today? And I told her, you know, unfortunately I'm not. I felt like you guys gave me wrong information about the job description and you know it's just not the best fit for me and so forth and so have you and then she didn't ever text me back so I just didn't ever go back and I was not about to sell fucking phones for $15 mind you we probably sold like three phones the whole eight hours so that means do the math y'all do the damn math do the math that is sad Baby, I would not be bringing no money back depending on these people. I'm depending on people in the streets. No, I'm depending on the people in the hood. No, I'm not doing that. I could not believe it. Then they made me quit my job, left my old job in not good standings because y'all wanted me to come to a job that y'all lied about. Like that was so foul. Like that was so, so foul. But I definitely learned my lesson and won't ever happen again. You win some and you lose some, y'all. And this is a prime example of that. I'm definitely not worried, like I said. I just been, you know, doing YouTube, been more, you know, onto YouTube. Like y'all see my other vlogs. I did be a hookah girl for a night. And I am getting offered a bottle girl position as well. So I am going to be a hookah girl and bottle girl. But I am currently still looking for better employment as well. Because, you know, just to be, you know, more stable. But I'm also going to be doing YouTube and sponsors and everything like that. So I'm still having money flow in. So it's not too detrimental on me. But, yeah, I'm just not worried. And I'm in a good space right now. I'm being able to see my friends more often. Being more able to be free, basically. Like, I have more free time and I really, really like that. Like, you know, I'm genuinely looking at it in a positive light. Yeah, I just no longer work there and that's really the whole story, honestly. But this is going to be the ending of the video. Don't forget to shop V Look Glasses. Yes, V Look Glasses. Don't forget to shop with them. All the links will be in the description below. So definitely go check that out. But yes, this is going to be the ending of the video. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, y'all. And stay tuned for more content and more vlogs and more videos and more everything on my channel. Bye, guys. Mwah.